I love what the old drill sergeant said. Gentlemen, you can fake commitment, but you can't fake showing up. Thank you for showing up. It's been a kind of a long morning. What I'm going to suggest is for about one second, if you'd like to stand and reset yourself, that'd sure be fine. Let's just as a region stand up and then maybe sit down. Thank you all so much for that. I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm Chuck Fluarty, as I mentioned before. I'm president of the Rural Policy Research Institute. And Rupri's work in regional innovation around the nation and world is always initiated by requests for assistance, usually from a region. The framing of the challenge varies a great deal from place to place. The words are different. The language may be slightly different, but almost always when you unpack the situation, folks are realizing that if you do the same things over and over, you're going to probably get the same outcomes. Now, we as humans are creatures of habit, and we, we're not great about change. But when the outcomes become significantly obvious that things will not change, people realize it's time. That is the reason 1,700 of you are in this arena today. Thank you for your commitment to these hills and to the future. This is very hopeful, but it begs a deeper question. I hope. Maybe our IT folks could help. Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here, said Alice. It depends a good deal where you want to get, said the cat. I don't much care, said Alice. Then it won't matter much which way you go, said the cat. I would suggest caring about which way you go from here is your most critical question today. Because this is not about just the future of Eastern Kentucky. What you're doing, as the governor and congressman have shared, is about the future of the entire state. In fact, it is about the future of America. Promoting growth in all regions was a recent release study from the organization for economic cooperation and development. This report traced all developing nations from 95 to 2007. Rural America needs to listen to this. In that period, predominantly rural regions, on average, grew more quickly than urban ones. Regions with GDP below the national average accounted for almost half of GDP in every developed nation. Rural regions, on average, grew more than urban ones. And the study recommended to all nations that future commitments to challenged regions should not be made on just the basis of social equity. These commitments should be made because of the national prosperity that rural regions offer. Finally, and this is really amazing, we hear a lot about global cities. That study found that it is true that 32 percent of national growth is in our global cities. But in every nation that is developed in the world, 68 percent is coming from rural and outlying regions. So this is not just about Eastern Kentucky. This is about Kentucky. This is about America's prosperity. There really are three critical questions that we ask any region when they begin to do this. And I would suggest that 
On the surface, it, seem, it seems obvious that you should do this. Appalachia has been studied, analyzed, and recommended to death. You all know this. But in my 25 years of working with regions, I can pretty much tell if it's going to work or not and why. And I'd like to share with you our perspective on what matters. I want to suggest to you, you have every critical element in this region for success. The first is, you must have public sector champions that will stand up, not for the photo op, not for the first speech, but for the long haul. You should be greatly honored with those four gentlemen that were here. A strong bipartisan commitment from national leaders in both parties to your future. That is essential. But secondly, will institutional innovators step up? These leaders cannot do it themselves. Every organization in the region must commit. And then lastly, constituencies must arise to jointly support these leaders and these institutions. I believe all three of those elements are in place today. Well, you might ask, where do you see SOAR having worked to develop it to this point? So I would just raise some questions for you. There are a lot of naysayers out there. We understand that. But I'd ask some questions to assess whether SOAR has a possibility or not. The answer to these questions will determine whether you succeed or not. The first is, can you be about rethinking core missions? Everything we've heard today is about institutions changing their role and their responsibility. Can you be about creating a renaissance leadership culture? We have wonderful young leadership programs in this region. They need to flower and expand. Can you engage the border crossers? We all know that that's been a little bit of a challenge in Appalachian, Kentucky. And can we redefine who we are and who they are with special attention to diversity, cultural, and social inclusion? Next, can you be about building or aligning new regional governance platforms? Can you be about building commitments for regional futures while recognizing those community commitments also need to remain? Good regions do not grow where good communities are not evident. Both must be done. Finally, can you be about committing to the long haul? And in doing so, can we not focus on quality of place and achieving some early wins? I'm quickly getting to what I need. What is demanded? If you can do those things, here's your future. Asset-based development, seriously rethinking those assets, placemaking tied to economic development is the future. And this is a simple question to test yourself. Would your young daughter or son choose of all the places on earth to come back to this place to thrive in the next generation? We all love these hills, but placemaking has to come with economic development. We need to build regional frameworks that align urban and rural constituencies, geographies, and institutional alignments. And we have to think about support for new intermediaries by the public sector. The future of regional governance is public support and philanthropic support for new intermediary platforms. That can be Farm Bureau, that can be a school board, that can be a regional entity, that can be a chamber, but those must align. 
Finally, this is really about working landscapes, arts, culture, heritage, natural resources, tourism, bioenergy, biofuels, entrepreneurial agriculture. All are necessary. None are sufficient. Finally, we have to innovate and entrepreneur ourselves in new systems. There are wonderful entrepreneur systems at work here in the region. They need to become much stronger. And lastly, when we think about workforce, we need to think about spatial mismatch. And I was energized by what Ron had to say, because we are going to have to think about workforce training programs that align community colleges, regional universities, and our Research One universities, but we're going to have to do that in broader geographies. The scale must be broader. Finally, we need to think about what real wealth is. There's a lot of talk about rural wealth creation and rural wealth retention. It is important to note, ladies and gentlemen, that every rural region has eight forms of wealth, and there they are. And any wealth that advances itself to the detriment of any other wealth is not long-term building the storehouse of wealth in your region. As uh, the poet, the German poet Goethe said, it is not enough to know, one must also use. It is not enough to want, one must also act. And so here are the unique challenges I simply want to name for the dialogues today that begin our journey together. You have some unique challenges. County lines, family names, this PowerPoint, <laughs> Friday night lights, listening to old tapes and not new ones, and stories we tell ourselves. In that light, our staff did a bit of work. And what I created in my hills, regional Ohio Appalachia, we compared to this region for SOAR. And here they are expressed. Here is what I see when I look at that. In Kentucky, in the same geography, you have almost half again as many counties. You have 14% fewer people and 24% lower median household income. Furthermore, you have a very, very different settlement pattern. When we say the hard work starts tomorrow, this is an example of why it surely does. Because the settlement pattern in Ohio, in its Appalachian Hills, are a number of micropolitan cities and small rural hubs. When you look at Appalachian Kentucky, you see a very different pattern. I want to argue neither is correct, but the future of how we move as a region will be determined to a great extent by how that looks. We've been honored to work with folks in the Utah mountains. When the Olympics came to Salt Lake City, the chamber in Salt Lake created something called Imagining Utah. It is an amazing technological program that allows the most remote city, county, or region to frame options about its developmental future with all those eight forms of wealth taken into consideration. It is a what if for how we move. This is but one example of the challenge you have in the work ahead. There is no simple answer but here is the solution track. Wherever we have worked, these five elements are clearly there. Number one, a commitment to quality of place. Folks, we love these hills for a very good reason. The congressman started his challenge to the planning committee at our first meeting by saying, 
This is about our soul as a region. We cannot lose that. But we must build entrepreneurship and innovation to diversify our economy. We must create new knowledge networks and new workforce networks. That is clearly going on. Wonderful ideas are emerging. Lastly, the one I want to talk about for a minute the most, because this is where SOAR comes in. We really do need a new narrative. We do not need a deficit narrative. And we really do need new networks. Finding those synapse connections is what SOAR is about. If these 1,700 people could pull the really energizing, visionary work you're doing over the next two years, this region really would look a lot different. The congressman's challenge that the rainbow is the future to the pot of gold, I think, is extremely important. I love your state flag. I would show it to you if my technology would work. United we stand, divided we fall. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, what lies behind us and what lies before us is not nearly as important as what lies within us. Every one of you in your heart and soul love our hills. Every one of you. Soar is an appropriate acronym because it is about shaping a region. Shaping a region as a potter shapes a vessel. It is gentle. It is conscious of the relationship. It takes time. But affection infuses the entire process the relationship between the potter and the end product, which eventually creates itself out of the effort. Shaping is a wonderful world if we can get it right, and it is the appropriate word to start sore.